Welcome back to the Atlanta Realtors Rundown. I am your host, Manny Recinos, and I'm excited to have you back. Now, I am sitting at the table today with a very special guest, a titan of the industry. Miss Deanne Golden is here. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Manny. It's great to be here with you and Michael. Absolutely. And we have our 2023 president of ARA, Michael Fisher, joining us as well for a very special chat that we're about to have. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. My honor to be here. And Deanne, thanks for joining us today. My yes. Pleasure. Well, listen, I'm excited because as we started talking about this meeting, uh, you know, first of all, thank you for the time because you are a very, very busy individual. Um, but I, you know, sat and I thought of all of the incredible things that you've done leadership wise. Right. And we, we see that throughout the organization. We see it in your different capacities that you serve outside of it. Um, and I wanted to hone in on not just your journey and leadership in general, but the idea of passing on the baton, right? And that idea of succession and leadership. So today we're gonna to get a very special lesson on how you not just build you know, your, your um, legacy, but also how you make sure that the organizations that you have spent time in can build beyond that, right? It's a very special thing. So we're going to dive right into this. Um, you know, one of the great things about the Realtors Rundown is we have new members. We have, uh, you know, people from across the country that listen in. So I do want to start, if you can give us a little bit about your real estate journey um, before ARA even, you know, kind of what led you to real estate, how long ago and why? Well, I'd love to, because sitting here with Michael, all I can think about is his two adorable children, Ella and Josie. And Michael, you know, my story began about at the same age as your two young children, because I'm the daughter of a broker. And from a very young age in the 70s, you know, I remember helping my mother get ready for open houses. I always say I went on my first open house probably about the time I was eight. Deanne's, Deanne's mom is a titan of the industry as well, so we can't... Oh. can't forget that as well. Yeah. Well, she loved it and she loved serving others. And, and it was so much, you know, in part of my childhood, because I remember, and again, let me just again, frame the era. This was before cell phones. This was before pagers. This was before beepers. I don't even think we had an answering machine at the house, but I would be answering the phone. And my mother had scripted me with how to answer the phone when she had clients calling at nights and weekends. So to say it's just been sort of in my DNA, it has been. And fast forward, I was... Um, actually in grad school and looking for a job and I wanted to go to Charleston, South Carolina and I drove over the Cooper River Bridges if you know Charleston, South Carolina and there was a sign saying hiring receptionist and I thought well I've been doing that all my life for my mother so maybe I could walk in and apply and sure enough my fortune had it I got the job and uh, that's actually how my career started in real estate was ex really walking in and applying for a job as a receptionist in a um, real estate office. And I still love to answer the phones every day. And so always answer your phones, everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, that's always good advice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. So you grew up in the industry. You knew how crazy this can be, and you still said yes. <laughs> well, I actually did a little different. I, I pursued pharmaceutical sales. Oh, that really? was my first career. Uh, but I kept getting drawn back. I kept seeing the love my mother had for it. I kept seeing how it wasn't, I remember her saying it wasn't a job, it wasn't just a career, but it was her calling. And I remember going back when I would go home um, during college and I would see people that she had served over the years. I mean, not just in one transaction, one buy or sell or move, but multiple. And we would go out to dinner and I would hear stories about how she had taken you know, a rental client and over the course of the years had helped not only them, but their children, their grandchildren, their aunts, their uncles, their friends, their mother. Um, and so I thought, gosh, what an incredible way to be able to replicate what you love to do. Yeah. And so again, thank goodness that sign was saying we're hiring a receptionist because <laughs> I, I might still be in pharmaceutical sales. <laughs> oh my gosh. She'd probably kill it in that too. Though. I'm sure. I'm sure. No, I mean, even from what you just told me, I, I see where that receptionist job kept you connected with the people, right? And it is. I think that's one of the skills that makes a successful real estate agent is being able to care for our clients in a very human way, 
right? And I think it, it, even the origin story sounds like it goes back to working with those, you know, those clients, the people having that interaction. So that's amazing. Um, I'm very lucky that I also got to interview uh, Michael right before he took presidency. We're uh, some months in now, right? Yeah. And so you're starting to see how how much of it, you know, is is how much work it really is, right? And uh, I know that I think Michael and I would love to hear, Deanne, how you ended up kind of as president in 2019, correct, of ARA and kind of what that journey and trajectory was within ARA. Well, I get it all just kind of seems by a series of doors that opened. Mm-hmm. And I use that metaphor, you know, in what we do being in the housing industry, but it truly is in life. And from like my very first week in Atlanta when I moved here in 2004, um, you know, Lane McCormack grabbed me one day and literally I had been in Atlanta for about two weeks and she said, what are you doing after work? I said, well, I don't know anyone yet and I don't have any plans. She said, great, you're coming with me. And it happened to be that was the fundraiser. And from that moment on, you know, doors kept opening. And and again, when you have the opportunity, I'm forever grateful for what Lane did for me, because next thing I knew, she was encouraging me to come co-chair something with her, to go to something, or she was challenging me to bring someone else. And so that kind of pass it on and ask one um, really kind of spawned. And the next thing I knew, somebody said, well, gosh, you've been on almost every committee, but this one, so you're going to do this one. And I kept thinking, well, I guess if someone else felt I could make a difference and contribute, you know, you know, why not try to do it? You know, I, we always talk about our why and, and staying focused on our why and, and what that is in your inner drive. But I sort of over the years adopted this, okay, if I'm staying focused on my why and serving other people and, and trying to make a difference, then why not take on a new committee or why not take on a role? And then, you know, kind of full circle to your to the last part of your question. It was one evening, I remember Ennis Antoine called me. I remember exactly where I was. I was in the parking lot at North Point Mall. It was like about five. 530. Um, Ennis, if you're listening, you remember that moment. And he said, Deanne, he says, you've been doing a lot of um, service in our association for quite some time. And I said, well, I, I guess so. I, yes, y'all keep asking. And so I keep saying, okay, if you think I can, let's give it a try. And that was when he asked if I would um, accept the nomination to serve going forward. And uh, that was as, I guess, president-elect, and then ultimately if it led to president. But I remember a quote that I read by Sheryl Sandberg. And if you've never read the book Lean In, you know, I encourage you all to do it. She's the COO of Facebook, and she and I have a lot of parallels in our life, um, just in life's journey. But I remember her, her quote that said, if you're given a ride on a rocket ship, don't ask which seat, just get on. <laughs> and so I, I think that's so much of what happened here for me at, at Atlanta Realtors was people gave me the opportunity being from the outside to to get on, you know, the bus uh, and to be a part of the force and the voice of real estate. And so I just said, okay, let me in, let me try to make a difference. And then it's not about the seat, you know, just get on it and, and shoot for the stars and try to make a difference. So. Yeah, and, and I feel like we're purveyors of that culture because I got involved after um, you did, Deanne, and Deanne was somebody that brought me along. And I can think of Bill Murray and Todd Emerson and Ennis and Lane and so many people that invited me to come to committee meetings and saw that I was interested and engaged with, with the association. And this, the Atlanta Realtors Association is it's a special place. I mean, there's so much um, love and commitment. And we all work different companies, we work in different marketplaces. Um, Some of us sell, some of us manage, some of us have rentals, property management. We all come together here to advance the industry and and raise the bar. And um, that's something that, you know, Deanna and I over the years have both been a part of. And, and, you know, she's been an integral part of me growing in, in leadership, but also, you know, the entire organization, the culture here is just, it's so different than any other place I've been. And I don't know any other places where any industry really gets together like we do to really work together uh, and to promote what we do for not just the benefit of our members, but for the benefit of everyone who wants to be in a home. Absolutely. It's a really special place. No, I mean, the the way that you were brought in is, is a lot of people's stories with, you know, specifically Atlanta Realtors, because it's a family, 
And the second you get pulled La in, familia. La Familia, La <laughs> Familia, and the second you get pulled in, there's no, there's no going out, you know. Um, and if someone can spot talent, it's definitely past president uh, Ennis Antoine. So that's amazing. Yeah, right. um, you know, you mentioned uh, being in the rocket ship, Michael. You're currently on the ride. I'm wondering, oh. <laughs> do you have a question? You know, maybe advice or or something that you'd like to ask Deanne, just being you know, months into your position. Well, I think, I think the rocket ship is coming back into orbit and going back to earth. So that's, that's, <laughs> you're starting to feel the pull <laughs> back in. I love it. Um, yeah, no, you know, our journey, you know, everybody has their own path and their own journey into leadership. And I can remember um, sitting in committee meetings with Deanne and just thinking she was such a great person and so cool. And it was so cool that she, um, reached out and, and wanted to be a mentor, wanted to be somebody that I, um, you know, that I could count on. And, and as busy as Deanne is, um, she's one of the most gracious people with her time. So if you need her, she is there for you somehow. Like somehow with everything you have going on, you manage that. Um, we're in April now and it seems like it's flying by. So it's like part of the advice that I've gotten is to stop and just enjoy the moment and be present. And I think that's something that we've talked about a lot, being present. So that's something that Deanne taught me. But um, for those that are listening and they're in other journeys in their lives, what other advice would you give for people that are looking to be present and enjoy the moment? Mm, I, uh, that's such a great question because you do. You have to live in the moment. Um, you know, we're all gifted a certain number of moments on on this incredible earth. And so one of my mentors, and it's so um, touching that you reference that I pass that on to you because one of the best pieces of advice that I ever received, and it was in 2001. I remember, again, where I was and what I was doing. But one of my greatest mentors taught me the quote by Jim Rohn, which is, wherever you are, be there. You know, right now I am so like savoring every moment with you, Manny and Michael, and learning and the exchange and just the the privilege and the gift to be you know present with you. You know, there's a lot of things happening. I know probably all your phones. You've got buyers <laughs> calling you. You've got you know sellers wanting you. There's people. There's life. There's children. There's family, um, and the world spinning around you. But wherever you are, try to give your full presence, and that's one of the best gifts you can ever give give to others. Um, and I think, you know, there's, there's the ability to um, grow excitement and energy in others. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm hearing Michael say this about just an imprint maybe <laughs> I left on him. But I remember when he was in Emerging Leaders in 2014 and watching him come in and introduce himself and just the energy and the charisma and the confidence that, and I remember thinking, he's going to go far. He's going to make a difference in other people's lives. So I think sometimes realizing that, you know, we all have the ability to impact and encourage someone else. And you never know what those random acts of kindness or those little mentions or those just even eye contact can do for somebody who is your confidence is growing. You know, it may really help someone else blossom. Um, and so that would probably be, you know, you do have a, a very, very, very exciting year right now. Um, <laughs> as somebody told me, you know, those first four or five months will be probably some of the, the busiest for you. Easily. But, but think yeah. about the number of people that you're getting to interact with, meet. Yeah touch, help them understand what we do here about protecting and promoting private property rights, explaining what we do through the political action committee and how that makes a difference for homeowners everywhere and to promote fair housing and our code of ethics. And, you know, while all the vortex is going around the whirlwind, you know, you're able to really, really kind of move your mission, our mission, ARA's mission and cause forward. And it's just through the synergy of working with other people um, in collaboration. You know, we can't do it alone. It yep. takes a village, and we've got a great one here. We do. We do. Um, and from your ARA family to work outside of ARA, right, um, I would love to, to kind of inform people that you also, you know, recently became president and CEO of a large Atlanta brokerage, right? Um, and with that comes a lot of responsibility and, again, that leadership that just shines through, right? I'm wondering what rewards that journey has brought you, right? Because it's very different than, let's say, the, the nonprofit organization work that we do with, you know, uh, ARA and other organizations. But this is now a large brokerage that you're representing and you're working, representing those members. So what, what rewards do you see in that one? Well, when, when the opportunity came my way, this is my 26th year in, in the business. And again, I remember a, a mentor of mine saying, and Deanne, you know, you really have the opportunity 
to be cultivating energy within others and for others. And, and that's what, you know, cultivating energy in others, that's kind of what, to me, whatever the title is, you know, there's the traditional words for it, but that's what we get to do. That's what I've, I've, I've loved to do here because people have energized me. And it's about energizing people for the confidence in home ownership, helping people understand how they can achieve home ownership. And I think, you know, as an only child, the fact that I'm able to be surrounded here and in, in, in my work and, and outside in community service around other people, you know, that's what fuels me. Um, and again, it all comes back to if you really think about the meaning of home and what that is. And we also help people grow well through just, you know, commercial real estate investments as well. But we're given that, that American dream ability. And I love, you know, that we are so committed to making certain we're opening doors for everyone. Because for me, I know there's been times in my life where, you know, that when renting a home, the thought of purchasing a home seems so far away. And to be able to guide someone to to that journey, and to be able to open the doors, or to make a um, you know a move in in the happy times and the sad times. Think about it. We're often called in at points of pleasure and points of pain. You know, it may be a family growing. It may be an exciting relocation. It may be somebody getting married. It may be you know they've grown some wealth, and so they're looking or their first time. But we also may be being called in at points of pain whether it's a death, a divorce, maybe it's a relocation that's not being as well received. You know, maybe it's been a financial setback. So I think, you know, what drives my why is every day knowing that when we get called to service, it's because we're trying to help somebody navigate an opportunity in life. And that's pretty special. I don't know that everyone can say that. And that's why I think this industry and our careers and our roles, and, and again, their callings, as my mother said, um, and being able to listen and to be able to also help, you know, our realtors out there who aspire to help others. And that's probably what I spend the majority of my time now is sort of on the front line with, you know, our realtors who are trying to help the consumer the buyers and sellers and investors out there get to that dream place yeah. and keep That's them amazing. going. Yeah, and it's yeah. a it's a it's a difficult business at every level. Um, and you know, for me, being part of the Elaine Realtors Association has given me that community and that you know that social fitness within the industry to exercise my ability to communicate and learn from others. And um, if anybody ever says, you know, why do why do you spend so much time? I mean, I've even gotten it for family before where they're like, you spend so much time there and you don't make any money. That not that pulling you away from your job? But I feel like it makes me a more holistic person and allows me to better serve everyone at every level professionally, but also, you know, within my career and, and, and that growth and development. And I know that I've seen, you know, it's hard to imagine someone like Dan growing because she's already like so perfect in so many different ways. But I've watched you grow throughout your leadership journey and, you know, each step, it, you can see there's intent, but then there's also opportunities that come and, and are placed in front of you because of the work that you've done, not just within the industry, but you know here at the association and, and on behalf of others. You have yeah. to be a perpetual learner yeah. Absolutely. in life, in career, um, in relationships. And I think that's something that we all, whether it's with each other or going into the training that we bring or just surrounding yourself with different perspectives, I think that is so healthy. Um, and navigating, you know, the changing times because our industry is constantly changing and we'll never know it all. But it's so wonderful to know we've got a community that, that's here and our partners are incredible, our affiliate members. You know, they help us do what we do. I read somewhere that there's at least 42 different entities that are involved in any one transaction at any one time. You know, and, and who knows how many people that involves. And so, you know, the brokerage piece and the real estate piece is just one sliver to make the whole totality come to a happy, happy closing and happily ever after. Yeah. Well, like a project managers and, you know, therapists, <laughs> therapists and, yeah. I'm just and second mediators second. and, uh, you know, yeah. ambassadors <laughs> and, you know, we got to wear a lot of hats and it's, it's, um, and great listeners. Yeah. yeah. No, I tell the story that sometimes, I mean, we are definitely, uh, whether you want to or not take on the, the role, if you are a real estate agent, you are a leader in the community, period. Yes. They're gonna, people are entrusting you with one of the largest purchases of their life. 
uh, a very complicated one that we try to make look as easy as possible, right? Um, and you get to lead a group of people that do that, you know, in this role uh, as president and CEO of the brokerage. And it's amazing to hear that you're able to take all these lessons that you've learned from mentors, your time at organizations like Atlanta Realtors, and I'm sure a million other, you know, things that you've done outside of, of just your work and put those lessons to work there. So that's that's very special. Now, I want to talk about, again, one of the incredible gifts that you have, which is leadership, right? Um, that you've undertaken in so many roles, uh, very successfully, I may add, from the way that people have always, you know, I've always heard your name mentioned with such regard. Um, and, and what I'll say is it's, it seems to me that you know a little something about how one sets themselves up for that idea of succession beyond that role, right? Um, presidency, for example, at ARA is one year. The buildup to that is many, many years, but then you have to think about not just the legacy, because the legacy, you know, is 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 what you want to leave as a gift to that organization. But how do you let others know that there is a path for them? How do you build others up that way? Um, so I'm kind of wondering how important do you think it is not only to leave that legacy, but to create leaders and opportunities that keep those organizations and projects thriving past one's time there. I knew you were going to ask me this question, <laughs> and um, I wrote down a quote okay. that someone shared with me, again, um, someone very special. And it was by Pericles, which, I mean, we're dating back to the golden age of Athens, but it <laughs> says, what you leave behind is not engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. And I think that resonates so much because what we weave into the fabric of other people and, and the villages we serve and the communities we serve, you know, that is part of the legacy that, that we all get to build. And to see it sustain past one moment in time, you know, then you know you've, you've got momentum. You know, for just to be here today and then gone tomorrow, that to me is a waste of time. To be able to build upon each other's and, you know, I, obviously I love to read and, and that's where I get a lot of my inspiration. But, you know, it was it was pretty, probably somewhere, Michael, you were probably <laughs> coming out of emerging leaders, but someone gave me um, John Gordon's book, The Energy Bus. And it talks about rule number one, you're the driver of your bus. But somewhere like around rule four or five in his book, he talks about that you've got to drive with passion and you've got to be able to invite others onto your bus with you because they'll be the ones that'll keep it fueling forward. You know, they'll be, you'll be getting on different seats as you go through life's journey. And so when, when others are feeling part of the movement and part of your vision and part of the vision of Atlanta Realtors. And, you know, that's when that momentum, that swell, it's kind of like in the ocean, you know, a wave's got a crescendo and there's a lot of forces coming behind it and then it'll kind of ebb, but you've got to keep this energy moving forward to keep us all moving forward or it's all for naught. Mm -hmm. So I, I think those are, you know, if, whether it's with children or whether it's with those you serve in life um, or in work or, you know, in, in your spirituality or wherever you find yourself, it takes, it does. I've said it, I think, three times now, but to be able to have a village around you that can not only help you move forward to achieve accomplishments that you want, but they can also sometimes be the person to bring you back into reality check. You know, that's like what when we talked about this with mentors. Sometimes the greatest mentors are the ones that they may not always tell you what you want to hear, but they tell you what you need to hear. And and sometimes they may not always be older, you know, generationally. They may be a peer or they may be even someone that comes after you. Um, so being able to see that together you are stronger um, and, and we all learn and, and there's a respectfulness that comes from hearing people's different perspectives. And if you are really committed to having whatever a legacy means to you, to know that if you're not here tomorrow, that all your efforts, all your time, all your sweat equity, all your passion, all your love, you know, keeps going, maybe not in exactly the way you envisioned it, but then in this life form, that the next tier of leaders sees to keep it moving forward. And that's why, you know, even things like strategic planning, 
Yep. It's been so amazing to see how, if you look back over the years, our strategic plan, our mission, our vision, our goals, our aspirations, you know, they stay in the same vein. They may take a little different permutation or a little different, you know, languaging, but the core values are there. Yep. What do you think, Michael? I mean, I went back to the culture, but the culture that we have here is um, – there's a word that we use in our strat planning, it's agility. And I feel like the ability to be agile within the organization is, is so important. Um, you know, the amount of professional development that happens within this association, it, we, had, we have a thing. So I, I was um, the emerging leaders chair in 2019 when Deanne was president, and she asked me to chair that. And that was something that when, when she asked me to chair it, it was, um, completely out of left field. Like, I had no idea. But she said, you know, um, she pulled me aside at a conference and she said, you know, I feel like we need to re-energize this. And she's like, I'm just going to let you do whatever you want to the program and I'm going to get out of the way and let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what about a new name? Like, I think that's the first place to start. And she's like, sure, do it. I love it. Great. Yeah. And then, and then we started thinking about, you know, maybe we could add programming and, and kind of do this and this and that. And then, you know, maybe this will... It, build in some excitement and, you know, and I ended up just that experience and that amount of trust and empowerment was um, really transformational for me because it was out of my comfort zone. My verticals had mostly been governmental affairs throughout my career, you know, in, in service to the, to the association. And I still have a passion for the advocacy side, but um, it was a totally different role. And, you know, me at the time, so I'm 38 now, but I guess I was 34 at the time. Um, I was teaching a course on leadership, which I didn't feel like I was at all qualified to do. But again, Deanne kind of, she's like, no, nah, you got it. You'll do it. You're going to do a great job. Um, and so that amount of trust and then her ability to trust me to take it in, you know, whatever way. And, and knowing that if, if we did something that didn't necessarily work, that was okay too. You know, there's, there's success and failure, I think too. And there's ability to, the, the risk that you may fail helps you be better you know, in, in search of, of advancing the cause. Um, and now when, when I sit around my leadership table, I've got people from that 2019 leadership class, three of them are VPs and there's board of directors. And, you know, I kind of look at the program now and it's this like really amazing program that's, you know, we get tons of applications for every year. And it's something that um, has turned into a really, you know, desirable position and, and, um, within the association to, to, to be able to do that. And so those kinds of things, you know, I, I take that, with, with me, I mean, it's, there's there's trust, there's empowerment, and there, that kind of culture goes all the way through the organization. You know, if you want to try and do everything yourself, it, it's impossible. Yeah. With 14,000 members, we have like 500 committees. I mean, we have a lot that we do um, between philanthropy and advocacy and professional development and leadership training. If you try and do everything, you'll never do it. And I think the same thing happens in the real estate transaction too. It's if you try to be everything to everybody, you won't succeed. You know, something will fall. And so learning how to kind of empower and trust people to do their thing and then get out of their way and get the right people in the right spots was a huge learning lesson for me and something that, you know, I feel like within our organization, um, it, it's just the culture that's there. You know, we're, we do a really good job in identifying talent and then bringing them up. And Manny, let me just echo one point. Michael's quite humble because we had reached a point with the leadership development that it had, it had just sort of hit a, a I'm going to say, a threshold. And we saw Michael's talent, and we saw he had a different lens at looking at things. And back to that cultivating energy within others. You know, he, he, I remember he looked at me, he said, Deanne, why are you asking me? I've never done anything in this space. You know, I'm kind of over here in political affairs, and I said, exactly why we need you in this space. You know, you bring a different lens, you bring a different take, you bring a, a new, refreshed energy. And think outside the box. You know, don't just stay within, it's because what we've always done in the past. You know, it's okay to challenge status quo if it gets you to status quo. Yeah. And that's what Michael Michael did, but um, it was a lot yeah. of fun watching. And I think we filled up the year, and now um, as I've had the it's pleasure. It's continued to grow. It's continued yeah. to grow and yeah. grow and grow, and we've even expanded the seats because back then we were even talking about should we do the program once every three every years other, or yeah. every other year. Mm -hmm. So kudos to, to you, Michael, well, and I, for... And I think the lesson of that, too, is you can't go wrong with investing in other people. I mean, the amount of growth that I received that year, I'll, I'll be forever in debt, in debt to that class. And if any of the 2019ers are listening, 
my 2014 class was better, but y'all were the second <laughs> class. And, and uh, that's an inside joke for everybody there. But, um, <laughs> you know, really, it, it's the amount of um, growth that, that I was able to, you know, enjoy in that, I think, started a direct line to me you know, maybe one day thinking about sitting in this role as president, because you see someone like Deanne, and you're like, there's no way I'll ever, like, be suited, you know, to, to take on this role as Deanne. Um, but, you know, you realize everybody has their kind of different way of going about leadership and different ways of doing things, and, you know, you've got your different skill sets, and you build your team around you. Um, and the way to have a good team to build around is to invest in the members and invest the people around you. So, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, I, even that conversation, right, that, that y'all can look back on actually touches something, a little nugget that already I feel like you dropped on us and it has stuck with me, Deanne. It's you talked about learning from, right? And the idea, sometimes we think of mentors and we think of, like you put it, that, you know, it's maybe someone that's been in the industry longer or, you know, that that is older or whatever you want to call it. And really, it sounds like, you have that gift of seeing that you can learn from not just those that came before, but those that are coming and the ideas that they're going to bring in. And like you said, looking at Michael and going, you know what, think outside the box. And that's what you did in that moment too. You could have gone to the person that's been training or been teaching for this amount of time. We have so much talent at the association, right? Yeah. But you know, it sounds like you even took that advice yourself and you thought outside the box and it paid off in a very, you know, productive way for somebody had to think you were crazy to do that i'm sure we won't some name defense. those people yet Stay there was some tuned. defense that happened the end they had to defend the decision but oh, it, worked out. Oh <laughs> it proved it proved itself sometimes you got to take risk in life right uh, yeah <laughs> That's I true. love it. Um, so it sounds like you definitely have found a way to keep that energy moving forward, like you mentioned. You know, um, I'm wondering, do you have any specific advice apart from kind of thinking outside of the box um, on how to, how we go ahead and create that space for others while we are still serving as leaders, right? So while Michael is still president, I know that there are probably things he's learned from you or from past leaders too that he's using now, right? That he's learning to pass this but ton off already, right? Um, are there any things that you would say that can encourage that growth and success while still kind of being in charge? Yeah, you know, I think asking for feedback from others. How am I doing? How are we doing? You know, what could we be doing better? How could I help you better? Um, I think sometimes when you find yourself in a role that you might feel everyone is looking to you for the answers, you know, you don't have them all. And so one of the best ways, I think, to take a step forward is to realize with that every step forward, you know, you're going to be getting to a new place. You know, if you think about it like rock climbing, you know, each time you step up on, on that mountain, you're getting to a new space and you don't know what's going to be in the surroundings or around you. Um, but to know that if you take that next step, you know, how, how do we do? We got here. How are we doing? Let's just read, you know, are we moving too fast? Are we moving too slow? You know, feedback is a powerful, powerful resource, particularly if you have visions like, and I'm again, I'm going to go to Michael. You know, we saw in Michael, he, we knew he wanted to lead. He wanted to give. He wanted to make a difference. And his heart was in the right place and his passion and that fire within his belly. Um, but, you know, Michael, you, I remember you would call me up and say, Deanne, can we get a cup of coffee? Can we go to lunch? You know, how am I doing? Or I'm thinking about this or, and, and, and that is great. And not to say I would have had all the right answers. And, and, and you did it with a lot of people because yep. you take, get different perspectives. And I think that is so important in any role you're in today is it's not just a myopic view. You've got to be able to see things through the different lens of different people. So, you know, for, for anyone that's listening and they know, you know, the, what the world needs is for more people to come alive and to find that fire in your belly. And, and don't keep waiting. Don't keep waiting. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm still wondering what I'll be when I grow up one day, and I hope I never grow up. <laughs> um, you know, do, don't, don't keep waiting on the sidelines and let life pass you by because you will fail and you will mess up. And gosh knows I've done it a lot. But, you know, try to fail forward. What is it that Zig Ziglar says? It's not how hard you fall. It's how high you bounce. Mm -hmm. And, you know, goodness gracious, I've we've all made mistakes, errors, um, you know, oopses. We give yourself the grace of a do-over. Um, know that when you're you're doing things from your heart, you know, the best thing you can do is, is if something doesn't go right, 
or you have an interaction, communication, is, is 99% of this in life. And so if there is a disconnect in communication, you know, let's sit down. I'm so sorry if I said something that wasn't taken right, internalized right. What is it, 18? There's 18 different ways for a miscommunication between like what you say, what you think you said, is, is what you all? wanted to say. It's probably exponential <laughs> now and then what you heard on TikTok and what you wanted to hear. And, um, <laughs> so Correct. all those pieces. But um that would probably be how do you give yourself space to grow? Um, look within yourself, stay true to your why, but then look in the mirror and say, why not? If it's if it is to be, why not? Why can't it be me trying to make a little bit of a difference? And um, you know, look for those trusted counselors and those mentors. I'm a big believer in mentors. Yeah, uh, I love that. I, I'll I'll say as soon as you said asking for feedback, the first thing that went through my mind was scary. No joke, yeah. because it is scary. You just said it, asking for that mirror to be put in front of you, you gotta be ready for it, because it's not always pretty, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're gonna make mistakes. Um, you said it in leadership, sometimes I've noticed, you know, I'm, I'm starting off on that journey, right? Um, I've, I've led some some organizations. So you, you're that, well on that journey. Don't sell yourself short. You're on the Come, on. Come on, man. <laughs> but but I, I do, you're right, it resounds that sometimes you can make yourself feel like you're expected to know everything. Yeah. And that's impossible. We all technically know that. But, you know, how do you, how you take that feedback and grow from it is where the, the special secret sauce is, I think. It is. Yeah. Well, well, and I think there's a, there's a, threading of the needle too that needs to happen where um, you not only are listening but you're actually and, and this this goes back to what we talked about earlier about being present but you know I've, I've asked for feedback before and had conversations with people who are very distracted or, or people will come to me and they'll have an opinion on, on something but it's not constructive and so I've learned also in asking feedback the best you know better ways to ask for feedback you know and, and having action items or if people have a, a something they could, they can a failing or a shortfall that they perceive to be going on, say in the organization and within the Elaine Realtors Association. Um, okay, what, what, what's your idea to how, how would you solve this, right? And then putting people in the right direction um, to make change because there's a thin line between like a complaint and an action item. And if it stays a complaint or it stays an observation like this, thing is not working and it stays there, it's not productive, right? And it doesn't, you know, and, and so in, in leadership and, and what I've always tried to do is is give me constructive feedback and then know that I'm listening and know that I'll, I'll do something about it, yeah. you know, and, and know that it, you're heard and that you're, we're here and we're listening. Um, and then, you know, also sometimes people just need to vent. That's right. And it's good to be there for people and say, hey, you know, you vented. Okay. Think about now where we are, put yeah. it in the proper context, and let's see, you know, how you feel about it maybe in, in, in a day or so. Yeah, well so. <laughs> absolutely. And breathe, breathe. And breathe. Yeah. Very important. Breathing. You know, we're talking a lot about kind of mentors and, you know, people we go to to vent and things like that. Um, I, I always think of these incredible leaders, um, CEOs, right? Uh, I'm wondering that question of work-life balance, right? Mm -hmm. What is the answer to that? Everyone asks that question. So, you know, in our industry as well, that's that's a hard one. Ask, um, ask Deanne when she wakes up. What time? Uh, <laughs> it sounds like we're about to get that answer, right? <laughs> um, but I'm wondering, you know, what does that look like in your life? Uh, you know, is there a support system? Is it, you know, the, the family that you've built, you know, through the organizations or at work or at home? Um, and where can we find you on your downtime, if there is any? <laughs> well, I do get up early. Um, I think that comes from my old days of being a competitive swimmer and, and always getting up early. But I have found that that can be my downtime, you know, for, for prayer, for meditation, for reflecting, for taking that pause, for breathing, for exercising, for kind of charting out, you know, not what's going to be the urgent in the day, but what's the priorities in the day. And and I think that's, you know, the word balance in life, you know, it, it's definitely, it's something that's ever fleeting and we all seem to be chasing it. But if you're there in the moment and you're there with your family, you're there with your, your work, you're there wherever you are, you know, back to that Jim Rohn quote, um, there was the COO of Coca-Cola 
uh, I believe his name was um, Dyson. And I heard him at a speech, this has been years and years ago, and he talked about life like juggling a series of balls. And if you've ever heard this this quote, forgive me for repeating it, but it's just the best way I think I can, can describe life balance. Um, but we're all juggling these balls. Say you've got five in the year, maybe you have seven, maybe you have six, and call them what you want you know, work, family, spirituality, finances, health, you know, whatever your balls are that you're juggling, okay? Um, you know, Atlanta Realtors Association is president for Michael, you know, whatever. Right there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're juggling these. And, and there's one of them, though, you know, that is like a rubber ball, and that is your work. If you do the right thing every day and you show up and you, you make the seeds and you plant the seeds, you know, if for some reason you have to take your eye off it because a member of your family is sick or you're going through a difficult time or something like that, that the ball should keep bouncing if you've done all the right activities, you know, at the end of the day. And so often sometimes people they, they spend so much time on that work that they neglect the other balls. But as Greg Dyson said, the, those other balls are the, the glass ones. And if you lose sight of one of those, your health, your family, you know, they could be irrevocably shattered, damaged, Nick scuffed, and you may never be able to get them back. And so when you think about life like that, I think it helps put things in perspective. You know, I've, I've learned that when someone's health, you know, it is irrevocably shattered or damaged, you know, work takes on a whole different perspective when it comes to what really matters at the end of the day. Um, my children would definitely tell you I'm probably not the best at, at life work balance, but I will tell you that is like one of the things we work so hard for. When I get home with them or when they're in the car, you know, I turn on being, you know, that Uber driver mom, that, you know, <laughs> chief energy officer of Momville, and, um, you know, what's ever important for cultivating energy in them. Uh, and I think that's so important, but at work, you know, having a team. I mean, that to me, being surrounded, whether it's our team here at ARA or in my, my professional line of work, having a strong team is so, I mean, even today, the great team that's recording our podcast, it takes a village back there. They like to stay behind the, the video <laughs> recorder. But I mean, there's a lot of people that make things happen on the front line and, and having that. Um, so I would 100% say that the only way, you know, and what, what did Dolly Parton say? Don't be so busy making a living that you don't make a life. Yeah. You know, make a life for yourself. You'll be better at work. You'll be better for your partners. You'll be better for your family. You'll be better for your community. You'll be better for the future legacies. Um, and, and humor. You've got to have humor. Yeah. You know, this morning when my daughter was asking where her Nike socks were, and we only have, you know, probably 20 pairs of Nike socks, you just have to laugh sometimes and don't sweat the, you know, small stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I will say one thing I've learned from Michael is that we do like having fun at ARA. So this might be the perfect segue to kind of team up against you here at the end. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to let Michael think of a question here, but while he's thinking of one, I've got a couple little rapid fire questions to throw at you, okay? Okay. Some of them are going to be fun. They you weren't on my pre be, They weren't on my pre-planned questions. There was no right, pre-planned so no questions. I'm full of rapid fire. So. <laughs> we can okay. have bloopers. Can we have yeah. bloopers, guys? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is this is the promo we use to make them watch. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna do a couple, and then you know we can we can trade off here. Like a I'm on a game and, and this is know, this is right? no explanation. No it's explanation. First yeah, thing you, you think of. You don't have of, to explain. First thing you think of. Shorter answer the better. We yes. wanna we wanna get to know you, but you know. Unless you want to get controversial. Be mysterious. No, <laughs> be mysterious in this too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what is your favorite mm. breakfast? Uh, Smart Start cereal. Okay. Um, favorite go to karaoke song. Um, I can't stop the feeling. Oh, okay. See, we're learning. We, we do karaoke, so I know what to ask you for now. That's amazing. All right. Um, what object do you misplace or lose the most? Oh, my phone. That's relate with <laughs> that phone one. charger. Michael, you got one for us? What's your favorite ritual? Um, to charge my phone. <laughs> <laughs> what stranger do you still think about sometimes? Oh, um, well, I met him, and so <laughs> and I'm now engaged. So, so to there him. are no strangers. That is that is a real that's estate a, answer. If I've that's ever a heard one, answer. yeah, <laughs> that is seriously, a great answer. Um, who is your favorite Disney character? Oh, uh, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse, classic. Mm -hmm. Michael, drop everything, pack one bag. Where are you going? Oh, Italy. 
I love it. A Amalfi Coast. Okay. All right. All right. I love it. And if you had a moment that you could do over, what would it be? Mm. That's a hard one. I told you, I'm going to throw in a deep one in there sometimes. Hey, swim a hundred backstroke again when I was um, 18. Yeah. I love it. Michael, you want to do the last one here? (laughs) Um, You grew up in Athens, so what's your late night spot in Athens? I can't say that. And it better be the grill. (laughs) It better be the grill, right? (laughs) The grill. Yeah, That's the safe one. We're go. going with the safe one, y'all. I answer that for you. Uh, that, is, that is good. Come on. You, you did well on that one. You did really good. Um, all right. Well, you know, I wanted to touch on, I um, always like to kind of end these podcasts with what the future looks like, right? And what you see. You already said something again that I loved, and that is, you know, I hope I don't grow up. I hope I don't find eventually what it is that I'm trying to do because you're just you're obviously taking on roles and breaking barriers here um I will I want to mention that one of them is a recent appointment by Governor Brian Kemp to serve on the Georgia Real Estate Commission Board correct yes absolutely yeah. congratulations yeah. um so you know I, I want to kind of just hear a little bit of of either how that came about or how you know Obviously, you must be very proud of it. Just kind of your feelings on on that type of appointment. Well, it's it's a true honor. Uh, And I shared this the other week at our board meeting that I think one of the greatest senses of pride was when I got introduced, when I got appointed to the board um, as having been a former president of Atlanta Realtors Association and the the reputation and the recognition and the the force that ARA is in the state and with GREC. And so that was a real source of pride that that was actually, you know, how how they, they introduced me. But, you know, I think, again, back to that perpetual learner, you know, having done this business 26 years and, and been around it all my life for nearly, you know, I think my mother was licensed in 1978. This has just been another way for me to learn a deeper side of of what we do to protect the consumer. And hopefully my voice will be able to help us continue to, to move forward in protecting consumers, protecting, you know, our industry and what we do um, and elevating, you know, and elevating the bar and the professionalism, which is something I think y'all know I'm really passionate about. So um, that was something that just, again, kind of got the call. And um, I figured, well, if somebody saw that I like, could make a difference, you know, you don't necessarily want to say no to your governor. So I, <laughs> I said, I don't know that, you know, I'm, I'm the most qualified, but if you think I can bring something to it, and maybe it's just the perspective of having done it um, from our lens. And so you're just going to show up authentically and try to make a difference. And you know, I was studying last night a little bit some more. Um, so I, again, I love that wherever I can feel like I'm continuing to learn, um, and be surrounded with with you know people that inspire me. Um, that was the first thing really you said when when I asked Deanne. I was like, "So tell me about it. How's it going?" And she says, "You know, it's so cool. I'm learning so much." It was the very first thing she said about it. So, I think that enthusiasm for the business and and for somebody that's done as much as you have and worked in every capacity and grew up and been around it, the fact that you're still learning and still enthusiastic about it is is something to admire. And it's a good example for all of us. Sounds like that spaceship came back and you jumped on. <laughs> yeah, Rocket right. ship, not spaceship. That's a different one. <laughs> um, so final question here, again, looking towards the future. It's a, a three-parter technically, um, just with so much on the horizon. What are you looking forward to the most in our industry? at ARA specifically for the future of ARA and in your own personal life, if I may ask. Okay. I'll start with the first one. You know, I think for our industry to continue the crusade to be able to bring home ownership for everyone. I mean, that's just what we do, and and that is so multidimensional. Um, and to be able to educate people and to help people get from point A to point B. That's number one. Um, You know, I think for ARA, um, you know, we just need to keep doing all the incredible things that we're doing. We have made so many strides. Um, There is such a great culture here. There's such a great energy. We would love to see our 14,000 members, you know, continue to become more and more engaged and find the gift that that the Mannies and the Michaels and and so many of us that have, have come into this community and found that it helped us professionally and personally and just enriching our 
alive. So that would probably be something um, that as is, you know, for anyone listening, again, don't be waiting to to dive in or feel that you're not able to give some way, just raise your hand, just say, hey, how can I get involved? What could I do? Um, and sometimes it's just something as simple as is coming to a class, you know, coming to our Capita school, which we're so proud of, find ways to immerse in, in what we do, because uh, then we'll be better for the consumer. And then personally, well, you know, um, anybody knows me, I mean, my children are my world. They're 14 and they're 11, um, my daughter and, and my son, and, and just to keep them moving forward in life and to find happiness. And, uh, you know, it's been so rewarding. Um, I've widowed, but um, I am engaged. So I know y'all been wanting to get that out of me. Um, <laughs> I know y'all been dancing around <laughs> it. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very blessed that uh, we have someone wonderful in our life. And again, it's just when, when one door opens and, and things are there, you know, seize the moment. And so uh, we're very, we're very blessed to have, um, you know, a future together. But um, let's get Grace through college and Wilson too. So <laughs> that, that. <laughs> Listen, I, I can tell, I mean, life is, life is uh, full of adventure and you're ready to take on more and more of it. And that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I, I hope that, you know, our listeners are able to hear that. Um, you know, it, it's, it's incredibly, incredible to be able to sit and share this moment with you uh, and Michael as well and kind of have that full circle moment, you know, and, uh, we thank you again so much you. for your time. Well, thank you. And I will just close on this. The question, the fast round, What if you had a moment to do over again, what would it be? You know, don't end a day without telling somebody that you love them. Don't end the day without telling somebody you're grateful for or that you thank them. Don't end the day without telling somebody that made a difference in your life, how much they meant to you. Um, so that's really how I would answer that one. Love that. That's great advice. Very great Good. advice. Manny, thank you. Oh, and thank you all. Thank, thank you, Deanne. I appreciate yes. you. Yeah. Deanne, Michael, we appreciate it. And listen to all of our Atlanta Realtors Rundown listeners. We love you. We appreciate you. And we are signing off on this one. Until next time, see you all.